please welcome tonight's presentation of What I Want to Do When I Grow Up. When I Grow Up. I don't want to live paycheck to paycheck. I don't want to cry when paying the bills. When I grow up. I don't want to be turned down for a business loan. I don't want to borrow a lot for an education. And then not know what to do with it. When I grow up, I don't want to be paid less. Told I'm underqualified. Or overqualified. When I grow up. When I grow up. I want to know how to save for my future. Find a job I like. And start my own business. When I grow up. I want to know how to provide for my family. And invest in my community. And make a difference. When I grow up. When I grow up. When I grow up. When I grow up. I just want things to be different. At Junior Achievement, we promote economic empowerment through education. But we can't do it alone. Welcome everyone to Junior Achievement's sixth annual Main Business Hall of Fame North. My name is Michelle Anderson, the president of Junior Achievement of Maine, and I'm happy to welcome you here today to celebrate the accomplishments of three visionary leaders in our state. Thank you for joining us. Today we will welcome David Whitney, Jean Dean, and John Prescott into the distinguished Junior Achievement Main Business Hall of Fame. These three individuals embody so much of what has been particularly important over the past year. Commitment to family, community oriented, and steadfast leadership. Our laureates possess the skills and epitomize the values and ethics we seek to cultivate in our state's youth. This last year has been difficult for everyone. And I wanna thank the committed Junior Achievement of Maine team, board of directors, and greater community who is up for the challenge, remaining focused on meeting educators and students where they're at, adapting to the ever-evolving changes in our education, and shifting our delivery model to be the best partner and solution provider. The educators across our state are certainly the unsung heroes who, through their creativity, passion, and dedication, have shown up time and again for their students who instill a love of learning. We will highlight a few extraordinary educators in just a little bit. Innovation has emerged this past year, finding new and creative ways to provide real world learning opportunities and mentorship to Maine kids who desperately need it. Raising the aspiration of our youth so they can define success for themselves and their families has never been more important. And equipping kids with the skills and knowledge to make sound financial decisions is crucial for long-term success. Creating a strong and vibrant volunteer community that is inclusive and truly reflective of all Maine people is vital to ensure each child can see themselves in the mentors they aspire to be like. Junior Achievement works to broaden the perspective of Maine students so they are able to understand the job opportunities in our state. We are happy to be the connector the bridge that brings the education and business communities together, connecting students in one area with business leaders from another. Jay works to move the economic mobility needle so that Maine kids can forge a successful path into adulthood and possess the necessary transferable skills needed in the workplace. To the mentors watching, thank you for continuing to show up, sharing your time, talent, and tools so today's youth can become tomorrow's visionaries. Every child deserves to believe in themselves and champions like you show students that there is no limit to their potential. The impact is undeniable. Caring adults make a difference and ignite a spark in young people. Imagine if every Maine kid felt empowered by mentors who broadened their sense of opportunity and gave them real world tools to plan for the future. We can do that together, educating the next generation and building up Maine's talent pipeline to take on the careers of tomorrow. I would like to take a moment to thank our wonderful sponsors for making this event possible. Our platinum sponsor, Memec. Our diamond sponsor, MMG Insurance. Our gold sponsors, DN Wealth Advisors, Katahdin Trust Company, and Northern Light Health. Our silver sponsors, Barry Dunn, Cross Insurance, Key Bank, LG&H, 
Martins Point Healthcare, Northern Maine Community College, and the Valerie Parr Hill Company. Thank you to our financial literacy sponsor, Machaya Savings Bank. Entrepreneurial sponsor, Tyler Technologies. Magazine sponsor, Maine Magazine. Media sponsor, Maine Bids. And our virtual event sponsor, Headlight Audio Visual. Now, let's take a look at a message from our Platinum, Diamond, and Gold sponsors. Hi, this is Michael Bork, President and CEO of the Mehmet Group. I want to congratulate John, Jean, and David on their induction into the Maine Business Hall of Fame. And I want to add that Memic is so proud to sponsor Junior Achievement, which is inspiring our future members of the Maine Business Hall of Fame. Congratulations. Good afternoon. I am so pleased to see Jay persevere and recognize three outstanding warriors today. Jean, John, and David, congratulations. Well deserved. We are all fortunate to have you part of our world. Congratulations, Jean, on the honor of your induction into the Maine Business Hall of Fame. From DN Associates to DN Wealth Advisors, and now on to the next chapter. We thank you for your wisdom, guidance, and contribution. Not just to us, but to our Maine community. And endeavor to carry on your legacy. Congratulations. Hi, I'm Tori Barber from Katahdin Trust. In addition to my role as bank training manager, I'm proud to serve on the board for Junior Achievement of Aroostook and help inspire and prepare young people to succeed. At Katahdin Trust, a community bank with 16 locations across Maine, we believe communities that work together thrive together. And that's just one reason we're proud to support Junior Achievement of Maine and sponsor the Business Hall of Fame induction ceremony. Congratulations to this year's inductees, Jean Dean, Dave Whitney, and our own president and CEO, John Prescott. Thank you for your outstanding contributions and for leading by example, so our youth have the promise of a better, stronger tomorrow. It is now my pleasure to introduce two high school students from Westbrook who have participated in Junior Achievement's Titan Challenge competition the past two years, putting them in the CEO seat to run a virtual business for the day. Let's hear what they have learned. Hi, my name is Nazim Mohammed Ahmed. As a student from the Westbrook Regional Vocational Center and Westbrook High School, I've involved myself in many programs and clubs such as the Future Business Leaders of America. One of my many experiences in this national group was being able to attend the Junior Achievement Titan Challenge. This challenge is a business simulation that has schools compete against each other. The goal of the simulation was selling hollow generators, a fictitious 3D video product, and trying to get the most amount of revenue against other teams. The event was fun, especially placing the top 10 out of 27 schools. I will be attending the University of Maine Orono for biomedical engineering in the fall. I enjoy many sciences such as chemistry and biology, but feel confident about going into the STEM field. My goals going to college would be to obtain my bachelor's degree and have a career coming out. Hi there, my name is Charles Barry and I'm a Westbrook High School student. Next year, I will be attending the University of Southern Maine where I'll be majoring in accounting. The Titan Challenge has taught me a lot about the business world, specifically the thousands of decisions made on a daily basis by CEOs that keep the company in the black. Additionally, I work with a teammate and we often have to compromise on many decisions about the business. This has taught us about the importance of being able to work with a team and how important it is to be able to communicate effectively. Overall, the Titan Challenge has been a wonderful experience for me and has taught me a lot about the business world. Sounds like Nazim and Charles learned a lot in the JA Titan Challenge. We'll hear a little bit more from them later on in the show. I am joined today by our favorite WABI TV5 MC, John Small, who is kind enough to come back and host. Welcome, John. Thanks, Michelle, and hello, everyone. I'm John Small from WABI TV5, and I'm thrilled to be back here again hosting the Junior Achievement Main Business Hall of Fame North, albeit a little bit different format this year. It has been quite a year, and it is truly impressive how quickly Maine students adapted to their changing learning environments, and equally impressive how educators have stepped up over the past year. I know it hasn't been easy for anyone, but I'm grateful that JA has found a way to bring our community together in an interactive manner to celebrate the work they're doing for Maine students 
and to honor the amazing laureates we have with us here today. This year has been filled with ups and downs. Companies have adapted their business models. Communities have rallied together to support common causes. And we've all joined our fair share of Zoom meetings. But today, we'd like to focus on how Junior Achievement has overcome challenges and still aims to be the best partner and advocate for students. From creating an online career speaker library comprised of various main industries and voices, to holding a statewide virtual business competition where Maine students were the first in the nation to participate and run their own business, to volunteer mentors beaming into a classroom through video conferencing. Junior Achievement has adapted to the changing learning environments and quickly advanced programming to align to the technology needs of tomorrow. This year, JA will impact thousands of kids through these programs at a time when workforce development, as many of you know, has never been more important. Conversations around jobs and money and careers are even more relevant and need to start earlier in a child's life. When asked to talk about what they've learned through their JA programs this year, some fifth graders from Rose Gaffney Elementary School shared some wise insights. Let's take a look. Hi, my name is Kara. I like learning about entrepreneurs. I'm not an entrepreneur yet, but I know someone who is. Her name is Miss Copa Parsons. She's a teacher at my school, Rosem Gaffney Elementary. She is an entrepreneur because she started her own business that sells lettuce. I think that's pretty cool. Entrepreneurs may sell products that they have made or produced. In Junior Achievement, we learned about that anyone can be an entrepreneur because there's a thing called a free, the free market economy. People can really sell anything, as long as it's legal. Free market economies have a lot of benefits, including contributing to the growth of our economy, which is good for our businesses and communities. Hi, my name is Destiny, and I'm going to explain how to be prepared for a job interview and how to know what job you will do best at. I learned both about both of these things from Mrs. Denbow about during our visual junior achievement lesson. First, think about what skills you have and how you can use them at a job and the kind of job that would need those skills. Second, think about the job you will like and be happy at. If you do not like your job, you, then you should not do it. Even if you get paid a lot, it's not worth it if you do not want to go there every day. If you apply to a job and you don't get it, that's okay. You should keep trying. Maybe the job you do end up getting will be better and you will have more fun. This next part is very important. If you have applied for a job you like and then you like, then you should be prepared for the interview. My name is Kaden and I earned a lot about saving money during my junior achievement lessons. Did you know income is the money you earn and saving is an income not spent? There are different ways that you can save money. You can put it aside in a bank deposit account, in a piggy bank, or invest it. Savings in also include not spending too much money on expenses. If you ask a bank about the different ways you can save money, their answer would be a deposit account or a certificate deposit or a CD. An essential part of saving is to budget your money when you budget your money. You take your income and subtract all of your expenses. As a kid, I don't have too many expenses that I need to pay for, but I do not have a lot of wants. Well, I do have a lot of wants as a kid, because that's what some of my kids want, a lot of things. Essential expenses are needs, and wants are that items that I could live without, but I'd like to have. Hi, my name is Lola, and I'm here to explain what I learned about STEM, STEM and Junior Achievement. Do you know what STEM means? STEM stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, and Mathematics. You need at least one of these skills in most jobs. When I searched up STEM careers, I found lots of different opportunities. Physical assistant, software engineer, nurse, scientist, and dentist. I noticed that I didn't find teachers on the on that list. I feel that they should be included because all teacher because all teachers do all of these things. Even though you may not recognize it, 
you use at least one of these skills from STEM every day. If you're like me, you use technology the most. I can't live without my phone or TV. And we use technology every day in school. We also learn skills in math and science in school. Hi, my name is Paige, and I've wanted to share what I've learned about entrepreneurs after participating in junior achievements this year. You may be wondering what it means to be an entrepreneur. An entrepreneur is someone that owns a business. For example, they can have a store as a business, or it could be easy as buying something and selling something for more money. A kid can even be an entrepreneur. They could sell lemonade or have a dog walking business. If I were to be an entrepreneur, I would own a business where you make quilts and clothes because I like sewing. My grandmother likes sewing, so I'd ask her if she wanted to help. There are good parts and hard parts to being an entrepreneur. One good thing about being an entrepreneur is you can make more money than you spend, and people may tell other people about your business. One hard part about being an entrepreneur is you may lose more money than you make, and people may not come to your business. If you want to, a way to get more customers, you could create a billboard or an advertisement. Or you could ask people you know to spread the word. Depending on what business you own, you may need employees to help you. A risk you could be taking maybe if you have employees and business is slow, you still have to pay them. Most people say the customer is always right. People like to say this because they want customer satisfaction. If you are nice, customers will want to come back. If you are rude, the customer is most likely not going to come back. Another important thing to think about being an entrepreneur is where your business is. You don't want a car, car dealership in the woods, and you also wouldn't want a campground in the middle of the city. Being an entrepreneur can cost a lot of money, but you can make a lot of money doing it, and you should always do what makes you happy. That is some great advice from those students. It's always great to hear what they take away from their lessons and what they want to share about their JA experience. We are hopeful that today we can raise money to impact more Maine students across the state with JA programming. Through building an education pathway with school districts, JA meets the needs of students of all demographics and backgrounds, filling a gap where financial literacy, work readiness, and entrepreneurship is needed. Take a look at the QR code on your screen. Grab your smartphone and open the camera app and act like you are going to take a picture of the QR code. A link to a JA donation page will show up. Please consider donating what you can today. There is no cost to our educational partners for junior achievement programming, so it is through the support of champions like you that this work happens. With your help, we can raise enough money to leap closer to our goal to reach 23,000 Maine students by 2023. Make sure you follow along through the chat on the right side of the screen in Remo. We will also share the donation link there and update you with how much we are able to raise here today. All right, now to the exciting part of the day. Let's meet our laureates. Today, we honor three hardworking, influential business leaders. David Whitney of Whitney Corporation, Jean Dean of Dean Wealth Advisors, and John Prescott of Katahdin Trust Company. These three individuals are joining a group of over 100 distinguished laureates from across our state. To learn a bit more about each of them, we have some JA students here to ask the hard-hitting questions. Here are Narzim and Charles again. Let's get started with some Q&A. This question is for all of you. What are you most proud of in your career? What warms my heart the most when I look back on my career is working with the wonderful team that we built to run our investment management firm, to run it with a mission of really focusing on the individual and giving them what they truly needed, doing what's best for them at all times, and to have a values-driven business. We have a wonderful team led by women with some incredibly strong men in the team as well. But it was sort of a little experiment. Could you run a business like that? And would it be successful? The fact that it was wildly successful is one of the most heartwarming things that I can imagine. I think the thing that I'm most proud of is that we've been able to grow our company, which started in northern Penobscot County and spread to Aroostook County. 
uh, using Maine people uh, to drive the growth and remaining true to the traditional community banking values that we established in, or that were established in 1918. While I resist using the word proud, I, I, I don't really like that word, but if I were to use the word what I'm most proud of, I'm, I'm most proud of the fact that after four generations that the Whitney family of companies is, is still thriving uh, and expanding and evolving in Washington County where the population is dwindling. I'm, I'm heart, it's heartwarming to know of the, the very skilled people that entrust our businesses with their livelihoods and the customers that also entrust us to do the functions they hire us to do. Being in Washington County is always a struggle. It's always a rock fight. And we're there every single day to participate and to thrive. Thank you. This question is for all of you. Do you have a defining moment or experience that helped you get to where you are today? Well, my defining moment uh, that helps me get to where I am today is a little outside the business world, but it's definitely getting married. My wife has been a true partner in, in my career, and uh, that was the big ticket for me. My defining moment is a little unusual. My defining moment happened at the moment of my birth. I was born hearing impaired with the ears of a 90-year-old. I could hear vowels as well as anyone on the earth, but not the S's, V's, F's, and T's, the little crispy sounds that separate the words. It helped me learn how to communicate and to hear people in a different way than others. I draw a lot on uh, body language and on the um, lip reading, but I do need some sound. And it gave me, in the end, superpowers, because when I'm at a concert listening to a loud band. You may not be able to hear anything, but I know what you're saying. This question is for all of you. What is the biggest financial mistake that you commonly see young people make? The biggest thing that I see uh, is that people get a new career and a start with a new job and they want something, whether it's a new toy, a new vehicle, and they don't develop good savings habits. So the two, the two concepts are a little too much debt and not enough savings, and you've got to develop those things at an early age. Be careful how much student loan debt you take on. I'm not suggesting that you shouldn't take on student loan debt, but do the numbers. Understand that $10,000 of student loan debt and $100,000 of student loan debt are not the same thing. I have frequently seen people drag student loan debt like a ball and chain throughout their lives. At the same time, sometimes at some institutions with very high tuition, you may get a really good package and be able to go forward and do a great job and make that investment and have a return on it. But please be careful. And then when you do graduate, always live beneath your means, save for retirement, because if you're lucky, you will get old, and save money for a rainy day. This is a question for all of you. What do you think is the most important characteristic of a leader? Why, thank you. I would say the most important characteristic of a leader would be to be consistent. Again, thank you. I think the most important characteristic of a leader is honesty. The reason I think honesty is important is because the leader leads the team, and the team needs to know the goal and the direction clearly, and needs to have feedback, honest feedback clearly, on how they're going forward. Thanks for that question. To me, the most important characteristic of a leader is to serve. 
you're serving your employees, you're serving your shareholders, and you're serving your customers. All the great leaders that I know of have been servants. And so we always have to remember that we need our team more than our team needs us. This question is for all of you. What is one piece of advice you have for me as a high school student getting ready for my career and planning for my future? Thank you again for the very good question. I would say that I would recommend that high school students be very bold in their thinking. If you pick a career that you like and that you think will make you happy, it's cliche, but shoot for the moon. The higher you shoot, if you fall just a little bit short, it's going to be higher than shooting low. So strive, strive to be the best that you can be, and don't ever listen to the naysayers. Don't listen. Don't relent and let somebody tell you that you're not good enough, because you are. Some people know in high school, maybe even at a younger age, exactly what they want to be. My husband was one of those. I was not. But what I did do is I pursued and studied things I really liked. I ended up in a slightly different place. But I agree with my colleagues here. Be determined. Be curious. Keep on going. Never give up and reach for the stars. I would say the biggest thing is, as you start out your career is to be curious and inquisitive about everything that goes on in the business. Try to learn as much as you can. There are no silly questions. And also, a second piece of advice is to persevere always and through everything. Some great insight into three truly amazing business leaders and how they got to where they are today. We are about to hear from a few more local young leaders who, through your support of JA and its mission, are preparing themselves for success in a constantly changing world. Students who are converting their JA lessons into career action plans, who are applying entrepreneurial thinking to their everyday life, and who are learning to place value on the lasting contributions they will make to our community. Let's take a look at some of the timely, relevant lessons that two high potential Maine students learned in their JA programs this year. Hi, this is Susan Walsh from Summer Moore High School. We have the Alternative Pathways program, and we had the pleasure of working with Melissa Moffat Dembo from Machai Savings Bank for the financial literacy. I have two gentlemen with me today from our program, and they're going to explain um, what we learned and how that's going to carry them forward in the future. Both boys um, own their own boats and both boys also are stermen and um, work for other people during the season. What are some of the things that you learned from Melissa Denbo during the um, class that we had for financial literacy this fall? Keith? Um, learned about how the, the savings and how the debit and everything and the credit can be bad but it can be good if you use it right and the, the, like the saving trust and the emergency funds and everything. For you and your business what are some of the things that you would do like with an emergency fund? Why would that be a good thing? Say boat breaks down and you don't have money in your bank account because you just bought traps or something then you have an emergency account to pay for it. Right, what would be something that would be more for long term for you? Keep saving more and more. Right, right. Okay. Or keep that for a backup, like something breaks on your boat, alternator, need big bags, or right. little Thank stuff like that. That's right, Jane. Thank you. One of the things we talked about when we were inside was um, about budgeting and what you boys do. You certainly have more income during certain times of the year. And what did you do concerning your truck, Keith? Uh, I paid payments ahead up until like May so that in the winter I wouldn't have to worry about my not having money in my truck's payment not being paid. All right. Something else I thought that was really important that you said, Keith, 
was that um, you bought um, your boat from a private sale, but yep. you still have a contract yep. surrounding that. And that was one of the big things that Melissa talked about, is to make sure you always have a piece of paper. Yes, just just to show that, like, if someone didn't pay the payments on it, then you can show, like, the, someone that you have the contract that shows that they signed that they should still pay payments on it. Great, thank you. Jaden, you came to us a little bit later in the season um, with Alternative Pathway. How do you think, like, learning about money and the business aspect um, of the math will help you in the future? With my checking account, I'll take and split it, put half in my savings, and in, in my checking account, I can spend this amount of money until I get to my savings. I, I just keep that in there. Yeah. One of the things we talked about, you and I also, is about taxes. That when you're the captain of the boat, that you're responsible for those, but when you're the stirman, what happens? Well, the stirman is responsible too, but right. it's harder for them because they don't have a write off. Okay. Like, and like that's why I bought a truck because I can take that, you know, write off all, all my taxes. Right. And so there's a benefit of being the owner. Yep. Okay. Thank you, gentlemen. I appreciate your help. And um, thank you, Melissa, once again, for um, helping us out on this. And we look forward to working with the Chai Savings Bank. Thanks. I know how nerve-wracking it can be to share your story in a video, so we are grateful for the effort Jaden and Keith put in through their JA lessons and sharing their story. Both of these students are captains of their own boats as high schoolers, learning important financial lessons at an early age, setting them up for success. Please consider donating to JA Today so more students like Jaden and Keith can share their impact stories and gain the confidence to plan for their futures. It's no surprise that everyone has had to overcome challenges this year, but this pandemic has really shown a spotlight on the teachers in our communities who are dedicated to educating our youth. The uncertainties that they've had to deal with and the flexibility they have shown is beyond admirable, and our students are lucky to have such great role models right in their classrooms. This year, in partnership with MEMIC, Junior Achievement has begun an extraordinary educators campaign to honor a few of Maine's star teachers. Let's take a moment to congratulate the following educators on being featured this year. Lots of great representation in this group of educators from York County up to Aroostook County. The impact that Maine teachers have on our kids is enormous. Follow along on Junior Achievement's social media pages as JA shares educator stories throughout May. And now, here is a brief message from Memic as our Extraordinary Educators campaign sponsor. Hi, I'm Ben Delcourt, Manager of Underwriting at Memic. My favorite past teacher is an easy decision for me, and that's my mother, Kathleen Delcourt. She was a third and fourth grade teacher in the town of Scarborough for over 40 years, where she was a leader, mentor, and great role model to many children, including myself. The year that she retired, my wife, Felicia Delcourt, entered the teaching ranks at HB Emory in Lymington. Since she teaches me lessons every day, she's my new favorite teacher. I had so many amazing teachers growing up in Maine, but the person who really stands out to me is Miss Gilbert. Miss Gilbert taught business classes at Westbrook High School, and I just remember her classes always being so much fun. We had a ton of laughs. Um, but more importantly, I just remember Miss Gilbert being a teacher who really cared about the success of all of her students, and myself in particular. She just really helped me build my confidence. She saw a lot of potential in me even when I didn't see it myself. Um, was just always one of my biggest supporters and uh, she helped me figure out what it was I wanted to do when I grew up and helped open up a lot of doors uh, early on in my career. So I just want to say thank you Miss Gilbert for always being my biggest cheerleader and to teachers everywhere. My favorite teacher was my high school English teacher, Miss Russell at Brunswick High School. She kept her students engaged all the time. I don't know how she did it, but she did. And 
her high expectations wanted you made you want to be better and made you want to show up to class and and be prepared to learn and i think i've taken those lessons with me into my career and the future thank you miss russell my here favorite teacher i can't help but think of my third grade teacher my very first of many favorite teachers miss Beauchene. by the time i had her she was a veteran teacher but she still had so much to give. She was caring, she was thoughtful. She'd bring in a cupcake on everyone's birthday. She connected with each and every child. And she also had a great appreciation for the performing arts, which for me personally, who loved to perform, was so special. To see her passion as a choir director, to see her not only produce but to write a musical every other year and find a role for every child that wanted to participate in our K-8 school. She did so much and as much as I appreciated all that she did then, over the years I've only grown to appreciate what she did even more. When I was younger going to uh, junior high at Waterville Junior High School uh, here in Maine, uh, I wasn't uh, as focused on my grades as I necessarily should have been. I think I was just a little too focused on being the class clown and making my friends laugh and that kind of stuff. Uh, but when I was in eighth grade, I had a teacher, uh, Miss Rhoda, who uh, was such a very kind, uh, very sweet person uh, who had an authentic sense of sincerity to her um, where, you know, it was, it was very easy to connect with her on a personal level. Um, so really kind of formed this bond um, that, uh, you know, just through her encouragement and her seeing all the potential in me and her expressing that in ways uh, that was really kind of new as well. Uh, I was able, really able to turn my grades around and uh, turn a lot of things around in general during my eighth grade year. Um, and, you know, by the end of my eighth grade year, I was really actually kind of sad to move on to high school because I really just kind of wanted to stay in eighth grade with Miss Rhoda. Thank you again to our educators for all they do for our students. All right, it's now time for the awards portion of the event. First, I'd like to thank our Laureate Selection Committee. The group is made up of many influential Maine business leaders who go through the nomination process. You can see a full list of the committee in the virtual event program. The award each Laureate receives is a junior achievement sculpture depicting a school, library, and city buildings, along with JA's triangle logo. The award symbolizes the unique partnership between students, educators, and business leaders, each represented by the three points of the triangle. JA's mission is to enhance that partnership and to inspire and prepare young people to be successful, just like our three honorees. Our JA star, Nazim, is back to read a brief bio of each laureate, then a special video will play, and we will hear from each inductee. Take it away, Nazim. Our first honoree is a fourth generation entrepreneur with a long family history of business ventures, from blueberry farming to automobile sales. David Whitney focused on business ownership and execution starting at the age of eight. He started Whitney Wreath in 1988 as a junior at the University of Maine, a company that has since grown to employ hundreds of people seasonally. David's list of business ventures is long and full of success, including Whitney's Toolshed, Downey's Packaging Solutions, Tritown Marine, Machai's Glassworks, and of course, Whitney Wreath. When he isn't running his many businesses, David spends his time enjoying the main outdoors. Let's take a look at his impressive career. He has a lot of energy. He's, he's the life of the party, really positive attitude. Just the kind of person that you want to have on the team and you want to be around. And He's very easy to like. I like people who are direct. Uh, I like people who are assertive uh, and uh, seem to know what they want and where they want to go. When he puts his mind to something, 
He's hard to stop. He's one of the most determined and persistent people you'll ever meet. And you know, I certainly believe his success as an entrepreneur is a testament to that mindset and that attitude. You know, I, I can tell you about his first company, and, and I'm not even sure it was his first company, but when David was a teenager, he started a company called Superior Squeegee. And this was a driveway ceiling company, and he recruited other high school friends to work with him. I can remember seeing them riding around in these pickups and working on these driveways. David was born an entrepreneur. He's inspired me, my team, and countless others to bring our very best to every pursuit. He's proof of what hard work and a healthy dose of smarts can achieve. Uh, and anybody that knows David uh, knows, you know, his number one priority is his family. When we say his family, you know, he's talking about his wife and his children, but then David also has an incredible family in his community. He spends countless hours behind the plate for our Little League program. He was a founding member and longtime volunteer for the Down East Youth Soccer Program. Uh, he served as chairman of the board of directors at Down East Community Hospital, and he worked hard as co-chair of a very successful fundraising effort a few years ago for the hospital's new emergency room. Whether he was a business success or not, there's no question that David does have that, that servant's attitude and recognizes the personal fulfillment that you get by serving others. And David is also the great example of that one man can make a difference. And there's always a small group in every community that embrace something that my parents taught me, which is at night they'd work all day in our little mercantile in Lubeck, and then at night they'd be out at a meeting. And, and, I, and I would say to them, where are you going? And you know, they would say, if not us, who? And David lives that. He's always there, he's always answered the bell. Good man, great honor, well-deserved. I just want to congratulate my friend David Whitney for the great honor. And I, I'm just thankful for Junior Achievement, for the work that they do to inspire and to educate uh, young people that the role that they can play. And I know his and Holly's hope is that frankly, they would inspire others to do the same thing. Hi. I would like to thank Melissa Denbo and Irv Masters for their encouraging words in support of my nomination. To the Junior Achievement Laureate Selection Committee for their vote in the affirmative. To Michelle Anderson and Jenna Jeffrey for putting this all together. Thank you to Larry Barker, Carol Conley, Valerie Parr-Hill, and Miles Thiemann for their generosity in speaking on video here. To my wife, my mom, kids, extended family, and dear friends. To the employees, the vendors, the customers of the Whitney Enterprises who make our businesses possible. It has been said and often repeated that it takes a village to raise a child. I grew up in a family which, for three generations prior to me, put food on the table by taking risks to generate profit through small enterprise. My various great-grandparents were ranchers, blueberry farmers, fur traders, fishermen, and car dealers. During my childhood, my father and grandparents were car dealers and blueberry farmers. I started working at a very young age in and around the family business. My grandmother taught me how to rake blueberries when I was six years of, of age. My father and grandfather taught me the intricacies of burning blueberry land. My father passed on sales and business drippings he had learned from his grandfather. I distinctly remember a couple simple quotes and I try to incorporate them to this very day. It's better to sell five cars and to make $5,000 than to sell 10 cars and make $5,000. Diminished profits leave little room for error. The difference between successful people and unsuccessful people is that successful people do those things they don't want to do but know that they have to in order to be successful. And my favorite business quote and poker quote, pigs get fat and hogs get slaughtered. On the day of Thanksgiving of 1974, my two cousins, Bobby and Danny, were wrestling with each other and roughhousing with me. I remember that Bobby put his hand over my face and I could smell what I now know to be the smell of balsam. 
I asked him about the smell in his hands, which I liked. He told me that it was pitch from tipping. I inquired further, and he explained that he sells tips to Flo Hanscom, whose company makes Christmas wreaths with them. I remember saying, wait, you get paid to sell tips? He answered in the affirmative. At this thing, I'm, I'm thinking, tips begets money, money begets candy. The next day, I grabbed a sandwich baggie, and then I climbed the spruce tree in our backyard and I proceeded to fill the sandwich bag with spruce needles. I went inside and I said, hey mom, I have tips to sell. Will you take me to Flo Hanscom's wreath factory? Without skipping a beat, mom took me to Flo's where I, was, where I proudly presented my wares to Flo, who let out a hearty laugh. She explained that this isn't exactly what she was looking to purchase and then took me out back to her tip shed to show me what she was interested in. I just loved the smell of that room. I then inquired about the knocking sound I could hear from the next room. There were dozens of people making wreaths and others assisting. I knew at that time that this was something I wanted to be a part of. I started tipping that year at the age of eight. In high school, I taught myself how to make a wreath. By my senior year, my friend Stephen Beal and I were making wreaths all week and we sold them th from the back of my pickup in Bangor on the weekends. During my junior year at the University of Maine, I started what has become Whitney Wreath, which specializes in marketing wreaths to be delivered to the consumer all over the country. During the winter of 1991, I called Land's End of Dodgeville, Wisconsin ultimately landing a contract for 20,000 wreaths, which was my ticket home to Washington County, Maine. Our enterprises have continued to evolve and to grow. Today, we have 35 full-time employees and several hundred during peak Christmas season. Aside from being nurtured by family, many teachers and professionals were quick to help along the way. Their help at each turn has taught me the most important to give back after having received so much. If you want your corner of the world to excel and for the youth to excel with it, be a force of inspiration. Give of yourself. Give of your treasures. Give of your time. Be quick to say yes when asked to help and to give. Welcome new, a new resident to town. Attend kids' events. Tell kids how smart, fast, and strong they are. Encourage others. Push away from your desk to fish and to teach a youngster how to fish. Love with all of your heart. Be quick to find people doing things right. Be slow to catch their mistakes. Be fair. Stand up to bullies, but pick your battles. Become the leader you most admire. Do not quit. Give everyone the respect that they deserve and find common ground. Be inclusive. Lose graciously. Win even more graciously. Don't ever give up. Be loyal to your spouse your friends, and your loved ones. Forgive often and clean up your side of the street. In the words of Uncle Bobby Marley, I love you all. Thank you. A local Mainer with an impressive resume, Jean Dean graduated from Hampton Academy, Tufts University, and the University of Maine School of Law. She began her career practicing law, but soon moved into fascinating worlds of trust banking, investments, and personal financial planning, founding Dean Wealth Advisors in 1994. Her journey to the point of founding a wealth advisory firm was spurred on by the challenges and opportunities associated with both the evolution of technology and emerging opportunities for the women who had the vision and determination to start their own businesses. There are many reasons for young Mainers to look up to Dean especially young women. Let's take a look 
at her inspiring career. We want our students and our youth to know that there's nothing they can't accomplish if they work hard, if they plan, and if they think responsibly about what it is they're doing. Jean is one of those people who has helped all of us do all of that. I have seen her share her wisdom with so many people and you know her commitment to the community here in the Bangor area as well as across the state is astounding. Two of her, the patterns that you see are with both business and professional education, like junior achievement, and also in the arts. She's been a, such a powerful force and has been involved in, in such a wide range of initiatives to make a Bangor a better place to live and work. And also, you know, really uh, supporting things that enrich people's lives. It was very important to her to ensure that all people from all walks of life would have access to experiencing original works of art through the museum and providing access and free admission. And what's unique about Jean is for her, the grassroots efforts, the local, the involvement with individuals in small efforts has always been as important to her as those statewide leadership roles. But she had started out as one of the first female attorneys in Bangor, and she quickly rejected the treatment of female attorneys in the 70s when she first became a member of the bar. And she left private practice to become one of the youngest, and my guess is one of the only women to run a bank trust department. She learned as she went, and she brought her own style to it. She shows vulnerability, and she shares her passions. And this helps her connect with people in really profound and in meaningful ways. And it makes her a very, very compelling leader. Jean so deserves to be recognized by, by Junior Achievement. Jean's lessons are the ones that we all pay attention to. Community, optimism, enthusiasm, and hard work is what makes the world a really great place to live in. And the new generation of students and youth who are going out into the world are going to understand all of that and make the world a better place. Thank you. Thank you, Junior Achievement, for this wonderful honor celebrating Maine businesses and the hardworking people who make them happen. I am very grateful to be included among the luminaries who have been honored in previous years, as well as today. What an all-star team of inspired leaders. Of course, we all know that the pursuit of success is a team sport. Therefore, I would like to say an especially heartfelt thank you, first to my husband, Glenn, and our fine family, then to my business colleagues and wonderful friends, especially those who took the time to say some very nice things about me. You are the collective we, the inner circle to which I belong in which we inspire each other to do well in business and good in the community. But again, most especially, thank you to everyone associated with Junior Achievement for your enlightened mission, teaching young scholars strong values and basic business skills that will open their minds and equip them to lead us in building a better future for all. To that end, I do have a few things that I would like to say specifically to the JA students. First, good for you for expressing an interest in business the ability to identify the need people have, and then to figure out a way to deliver on that need while making a profit is the foundation of American capitalism. And that is a good thing. Done well, you can have fun in business, live a great life, and do a whole lot of good for your community along the way. Second, 
Develop trade or professional skills in an area you like, and do not be afraid to work hard at it. Einstein's comment about success being more about perspiration than inspiration is very true. Currently, there is a lot of talk about work-life balance, but there will be times when you simply must work hard to meet a goal. Then there will be times when you can and should legitimately ease back and focus on family and self. While a constant smooth ride in business life sounds great, rebalancing your work and personal time when it gets out of whack is a fact of life. Just do it. Third, do develop strong business skills and pay, pay close attention to the numbers. If you choose to be a member of an already established business team, become an expert on the numbers in your area of responsibility. You may need to keep, you need to keep score to be part of a winning team. To achieve success as a business founder and entrepreneur, you must understand that profit is the goal that allows you to continue doing your work. So become friends with your financial statements Install good record-keeping systems. Insist on timeliness and be picky about accuracy. Take steps to get paid on time and pay what you owe others on time too. Fourth, know your mission and live by your business values. Our firm, I may have sold my business to my colleagues, but I will always be supportive of that wonderful team. Our firm inscribed our mission and values on a coaster that sat on the top of each team member's desk. Understanding our mission was essential, but our values, honesty, respect, responsibility, fairness, and community were equally important because they directed the way we ran our business. Fifth, Understand we are in a time of great technological advances, but people still matter. Early in my career, over 40 years ago, I had the opportunity to attend a conference where the futurist John Nesbitt, author of Megatrends, was presenting. He said, the winning businesses of the future will successfully combine high tech and high touch. This is what is happening right now. You must have an understanding of how technology will impact and leverage the way you do business. But never forget that you must tap into what people want and how they want to be treated to attract and keep their business. Finally, know that along the way, with the thrill of success, there will be some losses and disappointments. Stay true to your values and be honest with yourself and others. Take responsibility for your missteps. Learn from, from them and keep going. Occasionally, there will be disappointments that will be due to the failings of others that you cannot control. Sometimes, people will be hurtful, even prejudiced. This has happened to me and to many others. In my case, I was asked to leave my law firm after two years of practice in 1978 because I married another lawyer. It was a good trade, by the way. This occurrence seems unthinkable today, yet disappointments like these happen still. My best advice is, whenever possible, Step away from that encounter and redouble your efforts in a slightly new direction and then move confidently on because living well is usually the best revenge. In my case, we had honeymoon bills to pay, so I joined a bank to work in their trust department. There, I was exposed to an area of the law that had never interested me, and to my great astonishment, I loved everything about my new position, especially the investing part. Before long, I was running that trust and investment division. That change in direction 
laid the foundation for me to later start an independent investment advisory firm, which I sold to my worthy colleagues in 2019. When the head of my old law firm apologized to me years later, I told him that he actually did me a favor. When life gives you lemons, try hard to make lemonade. There is more I would like to say, but time presses, so I will conclude by saying, go forth, have fun in business, bring your fresh ideas and energy. You are the future. The world is counting on you, so go forth and prosper. A prime example of working your way to the top, John Prescott started his career at Katahdin Trust in 1989, doing odd jobs like shredding, filing, and assisting wherever he was needed. Over the years, he has worked at all levels of banking, including the past 23 years as president and CEO. A native of Island Falls, John attended Southern Aroostook High School in Dyerbrook, Maine. He graduated with distinction from the University of Maine at Orono with a degree in business administration and marketing. Throughout his career, John has proven to be true role model for young Mainers. Let's take a deeper look at his career. I actually met John Prescott the first time on a basketball court, junior high. We go back that far. He was on our uh, crosstown nemesis, so uh, no, we always played against each other for years and years until we went to Thomas College together. First thing I noticed about a very well organized young man, when he came into a meeting or, or we had a conversation, he was spot on with everything. He, he had uh, done his homework and I was very impressed. I think that's one of the things that I'm really impressed with John about is that he, he went into a bank that was very successful. You know, he could have sat on his laurels and he didn't. He took that business and he just ran with it. When John started, we were, I'm going to say $150 million bank. Now we're a $950 million bank and he's done it well. And at the same time, stayed true to his roots. I mean, the Katahdin Trust is essential to all the small towns in Northern Maine. This is one thing I really love about John is he's always trying to be a better husband and a better father and, you know, he likes to learn about his people. He's a great listener and over time I've come to respect that that is a, a great quality of a leader. He's honest. He'll tell you maybe sometimes what you don't want to hear, but he'll tell you the truth. I've used him as a sounding board many times in my life. Like I think in his parenting, he just tries to find out what he thinks is best for each child based on their needs. Sometimes that doesn't always go well with the other kids, but he's just creative in the way he solves problems. I really enjoy the quote, you can't fake good kids and he has great kids and uh, he and his wife have raised a, a beautiful family. Sometimes we'll talk about business as being just human creativity. Sometimes when you think about business, you think about money, but really it's about creativity. I think he really likes to see that connection. As the world gets faster and faster and more complicated, you know, you, you need people like John Prescott around to guide some of these young people. And I can't think of anybody that uh, deserves an honor more than John does. You know, in Aroostook County, we want to keep our young people. <laughs> So business is, a, is important to the county, especially, and junior achievement helps, you know, make that seem possible to young people. I think he's very pleased to be a part of it. First, I want to thank Michelle, Jenna, and everyone at Junior Achievement. It has been very gratifying to be associated in a small way with the team at Junior Achievement since I first learned of this honor. The work that they are doing, leading efforts to encourage our young people and teach them the critical importance of business and free enterprise cannot be overstated. Throughout Maine, because of JA, students are learning the value of business, creativity, hard work, customer satisfaction, and many other skills that contribute to the greatest economy in the world. 
They are being prepared for future success. It is vital that this work continue, and I am very thankful for all the participants, and especially the volunteers, that make it happen. I would also like to thank the selection committee and to congratulate Jean Dean and David Whitney for their well-deserved honors. I am gratified that Peter and Steve, successful businessmen and friends, participated in this process. Peter has been a long li lifelong friend and someone I greatly admire, and more about the third video participant later. Throughout, the, throughout my time at Katahdin Trust Company, I have had the privilege to have Steve Richardson as a friend, mentor, and role model. As my predecessor as CEO, he displayed all the traits that I respect in an individual and business person. Integrity, character, and decency are what runs through my mind when I think of Steve. Everyone needs someone to give them their break, and in 1997, Steve had the courage to recommend 30-year-old John Prescott who was very raw, to say the least, to be the next leader of an institu institution Steve holds dear. Steve has always been there to give me guidance, put things in perspective, or just listen. I've been at Katahdin Trust since 1989. When I arrived there fresh out of college and having struck out in the job market, I was offered a job washing windows in our patent headquarters, which I somewhat reluctantly accepted. I soon moved to shredding paper in the basement in what can best be described as a lateral move. I did other more advanced projects when asked. When the bank decided to open a branch in Presque Isle, apparently I had demonstrated enough to be offered a job in that location, which I accepted. If there's a takeaway from that early experience in my career, it was to show up every day and do anything that is asked of you. If you demonstrate interest in your company, eventually the company will become interested in you. I went on to hold a variety of jobs in our growing bank in finance, marketing, and branch management, and eventually was offered the job as president and CEO, which I have held for more than two decades since 1997. To me, the greatest part about working for our company is the variety of roles which I get to fill. Leadership to our 178 employees, mentor to my colleagues, advocate for retail and small business customers, and supporter of our communities. Our small bank has all the departments you will find in a much larger institution. Marketing, human resources, lending, retail, treasury, operations, and information technology. During my career, I have gotten to work in many of these areas. I especially take pleasure in working with people to grow their careers in their chosen field and to help create a system in which they can expand their abilities and succeed at ever higher levels. Watching our people develop in their careers is my favorite part of the job. I think what we try to achieve at Katahdin is directly related to what JA achieves with young people. Working for a small business has allowed me to grow and expand my abilities, challenge me with new roles, and played a part in the development of the local communities in which we do business. Business allows people to achieve these same goals with skills they can learn from JA. There are great opportunities throughout the business world, and there will continue to be in the future. As I thought about what to say in accepting this honor, one thing went repeatedly through my mind. During my time at Katahdin Trust, I have been influenced more than anything else by my fellow employees. There have been so many that I learned from, emulated, and collaborated with over the years that I cannot possibly name them all. However, I can honestly say that their talents, abilities, and attitudes have been a tremendously positive motivator for me. Without them, I certainly would not be here today. So I very much accept this award on behalf of my colleagues, past and present, that make up one of the great workforces in Maine. Lastly, my family has been the most important piece of whatever it is I contribute to my work. Because of their support and encouragement, I have grown as a person throughout my career, and whatever I am today is especially because of my wife, Patricia, and children, Katie, Thomas, William, and Claire. Business is very inspiring, but also very demanding. And with the support of my family, most days I've been able to weather the challenges that arose, knowing that family would be there for me, no matter what the outcome. Thank you again for this amazing honor. Thank you, John, and congratulations again to our three newest laureates. 
It's been a jam-packed, inspiring day, and we are grateful for everyone who took the time to attend the event this year. Thank you to our JA students for sharing their stories, to everyone who attended today, and those who donated, and to all the sponsors who made today possible. Please join me one last time in welcoming David, Gene, and John to the Junior Achievement Main Business Hall of Fame. Thank you, and we'll see you next year. Thank you.